District 1, Daryl Jeter. Here. District 2, Michelle Glover. Here. District 3, Eddie Skeen. Here. District 4, Michael Bricky. Here. District 5, Danny Castile. Here. District 6, Chris Manus. Here. At large, Stephanie Attic. Here. The, the agenda, we have one change. John Kilgore under 8G is going to uh, combine that with number 13. So put 8G along with 13 back there. I'm sorry. I have one thing to add. That would be uh, item J under new business uh, meeting day and time. Manus seconds. All in favor say aye. Aye. And on to the, the minutes. We have two different minutes that you should have gotten. April the 2nd was the last regular meeting. Do we have a motion to approve April the 2nd minutes? So moved. Do we have a second? I'll second. Mr. Mr. Jeter made the motion. Mr. Manus second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? And then also April 16th, the budget workshop. Do we have a motion to approve the, those minutes? I'll make a motion to approve those minutes. Do we have a second? I'll second. Mr. Maynus made the motion and Mr. Jeter second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Now we go to citizens' expression. <clears throat> There's a statement I need to read before citizens' expression. Citizens expression period is appointed in the meeting when anyone who wishes to address the board or staff may do so. If you wish to speak, please come to the podium and state your name, where you're from in the county or, and or what organization you represent. The board may or may not respond to anything you say, but we will take everything you say into account when making future decisions. Please keep your comments concise and businesslike if we do have one that signed up to speak and after that we have no particular order we just ask that you take turns and speak your business any action will be considered after we close citizen expression and we will open citizen expression Ms. Amy Bradson considering a private mega landfill at the Moss 3 site in Cleveland, Virginia. It would accept up to 6,000 tons of trash per day via rail and truck. It would be out of state trash. Um, so it's not gonna be just a private landfill for our county. So our county is getting ready to make a decision that will affect you and your districts and the people of your district who live here and who enjoy the Clinch River and enjoy the beauty of our area. So I'm here to ask you all, um, as part of the We Say No to Moss 3 landfill movement, we have a Facebook page and we are working on lots of other things, a website, <clears throat> but we invite you to join our Facebook page and join our fight against the private mega landfill because you might not think that it affects you, but it does. Our environment is important. Our Clinch River is important. It's one of the most biodiverse places in the entire United States, if not the world. Um, we had Dr. Jess Jones from Virginia Tech come and speak at our last board meeting to talk about how valid and their efforts had been to increase the muscle population and that things were going really well with the clinch. We've got tourism. Um, we have man's farms here in Dungannon. I know we all like to get that produce. You know, that's an important part of our revenue and I'm sure our tax revenue. So we definitely want to maintain positive environment in the clinch river. So. I would love it if you all would be more involved in that and I would love if the board would consider writing a letter of opposition to our board against the private landfill that would take out of state trash so it's not just for our trash we currently have a contract with Bluntville um, that's supposed to be good 
for several years. Uh, we had a 20 year plan back in 2016. So, and Bluntville has the facility and capacity to take our trash through 2094. If this landfill was just for our trash, I wouldn't be as opposed, but this is not just our trash. This is about making money and it's a private company. So, thank you all very much for your time. I appreciate your consideration. Thanks. Thank you. Good evening, board members. My name is Bobby Powers. I'm representing my family and my future generations. How are you all doing tonight? I mean, really, how are you all doing tonight? Scott County is nothing but large tracts of farmland, and we don't have a lot of businessmen, doctors, or lawyers in this area. How many rich farmers do you all know? I'm worried for the board's mental health if you think that the people of this community can afford a 23% tax increase. Most people here tonight are just seeing a tax increase and panicking over a tax increase. What happens when you can't pay your tax ticket? They take your land. From the studies being reported, millennials won't be able to own a home. How do you think our children and our grandchildren can keep a property with that much tax? But you know who can afford this beautiful land between Jefferson National Forest and George Washington National Forest? That, that's where most of this lays. Millionaires and billionaires like Bill Gates. These families have been here for generations trying to work this land and keep something for our children. This is a legal land grab. Legal land grab. The citizens are here tonight to appeal to your better nature and common sense. We're here at your mercy because you all can pass this if you want to. But we're also here to protect your positions. If we can't have a board to protect us, we'll have to vote new members in. Where did the magical number of 23% come from? Those people can't afford gas and groceries. We're in the middle of a depression and you want to propose a 23% tax increase like King George? My family has a quarter of a million dollars worth of property over here. And I'll vote for a 90 year old farmer, a plumber, a coal miner, somebody off the street before I vote for anybody that voted for this tax increase tonight. Road back again to complain about dirt roads, and it's hard for me to believe and that they that many dirt roads in Scott County. And I think that we could, if, if there's any way that we could get more money allotted for dirt roads, maybe you can't take one money out of one pot and put it in to help dirt roads, but the dirt roads. Are, now are in real bad shape. Snowflake Road is just terrible. Been terrible for a while, but and I called VDOT and they called me back once, but the next time they haven't. They haven't got back with me. And uh, we'll, uh, VDOT will be here next month. Is that right? Okay. And I'm just uh, the six-year plan just just doesn't work. The six-year plan just doesn't work. It works to keep <coughs> dirt roads from getting paid, but I'm here to keep Snowflake Road on the six-year plan. And thank you all for your services, and thank you. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Shady. Good evening. I was going to come prepared, but I didn't, so I'm winging it tonight. Thank you all for being here this evening. My name is Valerie Reno. I live in District 2. I voted for most of you in my district and for you, Stephanie. Mm -hmm. But I chose to live in Scott County, not once, but twice. I am originally from Michigan. I left that state because of taxation like this. There are farmers, there are people who are retired, who are disabled that cannot afford this. I work in retail with the public every single day, 50, 60 hours a week, I work. And I see people coming into the, my store saying they don't know how they're gonna pay this ridiculous, unaffordable tax that you are proposing. It's a shame. Where do you all work? Do you work in Scott County? Do you? Do you, Chris? 
I work from the basement. So. You work from your basement. How many of you are retired? Can you afford this tax? No. So why do you think your residents are going to afford it? Where do you shop? For your clothing? For your cars? Cross the state line. Cross the state line, where most of us are talking about moving to. <coughs> My sister lives in Nashville, and she does not pay the tax that I pay. It is atrocious. And blame, shame on me for not paying attention to the tax that was imposed two years ago on my mortgage. My property is unusable. I have a small yard and I pay $700 a year in taxes. I won't pay no more. There will be a for sale sign in my front yard if this tax is approved. We get no county benefits. We don't have a road crew. I've got tree limbs hanging everywhere. And as a matter of fact, I believe it was three years ago, Tina, when the car got hit by the tree branch during the snowstorm. State of Virginia could care less, and so can this county. You want to do something with a 23% tax? Hire a county crew to do something. Instead of maybe the inmates picking up the trash along my road, because that's real safe with two granddaughters living there. I am just, I love to live in here, but I don't know more, and I don't respect what's happening in this county. So take it for what it's worth. You all can just sit there and nod your heads and agree with all of us, but at the end of the day, you've got people living in this county who love this county and who would fight and protect it. But you got to give them something, and not just more taxes, because it ain't going to work. Not going to work. Thank you all for your time. I'm District 5. I'm Jeff Watts. My dad had a Class A license was a building contractor in Scott County for over 30 years. My brother was in a store business, was in Scott County for over 30 years. I told you yesterday I'm on I'm a disability. I can't afford to pay no more. And if y'all looking at 21% or whatever on the increase, and you get by it, then you do it. What are you going to do next year? Well, we want 50%. We got them the first time, we sort of good us. We can get them the second time. Is that what y'all going to do? No, we'll vote them out. We can't, we can't do it. Uh, we're supposed to get a percentage the cost of living every year. The cost of living has went up 50%. We got a 2.5%, $60 that won't even buy our groceries for a week. Now how can we afford this? You tell me, I'll pay it. But I'm broke and I ain't got no money. Am I gonna lose my house? Am I gonna lose my land? I've had to take on something here since the last February. I lost my mom. She needed the land to me and my son. I got 15 acres. What I own. I can't even take care of it. God, how I'd love to have it. I can't take care of it. And I can't afford to hire somebody to do it. How are we supposed to live? Wake up, folks. Come on, there's better ways of doing this. We've got a lot of expenses in this county that don't need to be expenses. We're paying a lot of people for doing something that they don't even pay. I hear we got two building guys now that goes out and checks the buildings. When'd that come along? We've had one guy 
for years and years and years. And now you got two inspectors? That's a hundred thousand dollars a piece. Get rid of one of them. Right. Am I right, folks? No, oh, yeah. right. No. I've said my piece, and that's all I could say. I'm, you know, I'm not going to go home. I can't go home and worry. I'll have a heart attack over this. But I'm telling you right now, I'm one. And I know eight thousands more that lives in this county that can't afford it either. Thank you. I'm Roger Stidham. I live in Pattonville area. And this is how it is. We ain't going to sugarcoat. Y'all throw the money up a hog's ice over here on the river. That big building. Down in Duffield, up on the hill, look at them big buildings. You keep throwing this money away. Now look, a lot of money's made here in Scott County. A lot of it. You drive around these businesses, people's making all the money, got Sullivan County tags, they live in Tennessee. Amen. We're spending all of our money in Tennessee. You can't buy a pair of clothes in breaches in this county. Can't buy nothing, not unless you go right up here at Mountain. You can't get through there to look. Now it's time y'all cut stuff. Quit throwing it away. It is. It's time to quit it. Y'all just it's easy to spend somebody else's money. Hallelujah. You know, I like to have a hundred thousand. I spend it. Y'all gotta quit. Y'all gotta cut some. Everybody's gotta cut some. Now we, y'all hit us. We, you can't hit us no more. You just can't. Now people's had enough. Y'all gotta make hard decisions. Y'all do, but you gotta make. It. Start cutting this stuff out. There's a lot of stuff spin over here that don't benefit Nicholsville, Dungan, Duffield. Nowhere that way, but it benefits right in here. Well, these, we shouldn't have to pay for it. If they want all this, let them pay for it. Don't let us pay for all this child care and everything's going on. I'll say my piece. I'm Debbie Kendall and I live in Gate City. And um, I'd sell you any one of my properties tomorrow for what y'all got them appraised for. They're already, you know, they're not in Richmond, they're not in Roanoke, they're in Scott County. And they won't bring what y'all got them appraised for. And what jobs have y'all brought in, high pay, you know, good paying jobs to generate income for people to be able to afford to live in Scott County since y'all been elected. Nothing? That's John Kilgore. He's the man over. And he's he's not here. here tonight. Y'all got the uh, telecommunication building up there sitting empty. Norton got a new telemarketing company. Did y'all even shoot for that company? I've been here on the board long enough. I mean, y'all need to have some answers for us. Y'all know if y'all generated anything or not. Have y'all gone to any big corporate grand openings? Cut the ribbon? Nope. Okay, there's my answer. And um, would anybody like to buy my property? And we're like being like double taxed because the only thing that you can buy new in Scott County, oh, a little bit over groceries, is go down to Road and Smith, you can buy you a new house furniture. Unless you want to dress with Dollar General clothes, you can't buy you a new outfit in Scott County. Tell me what y'all have to entice somebody to come to Scott County and to pay these high taxes that y'all are trying to generate. You have to go to Tennessee and it's like being double taxed because there's nothing here and y'all want to raise the taxes 23%? You know, the solution is, when it comes up re-election, all of us to be campaign managers for somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> you 
buy in? Hi. Good evening. My name is Sharon Nelson. Um, I live off of Boozy Creek, District 2. And first of all, you have almost an impossible job. It's very difficult to be leaders in a county when there's so many things that are not working anymore. Um, there's a lot of things that I am not aware of that you are that have to do with the budget. So I, um, forgive me if I say something that's out of line. I really respect the work that you do. It's not easy, I understand that. <clears throat> the piece that I see, and I, and I appreciate everybody that's already said something, you've addressed a lot of the different issues from real estate to not having any businesses here for us. The one thing that doesn't, wasn't mentioned, and it's on my mind, is the school district. The school district and how they manage um, students coming from other outside of our county into our schools. Not only that, the inability for this Board of Supervisors to actually speak and have conversations, adult conversations, with the, the school board to figure out what is going on, not only on a yearly basis, but as a long term. If we can't have those types of conversations and figure out what to do with all the students coming from out of state into ours and we're paying for it and then looking to have it matched, something is, is not right there. And all I can, I see a lack of leadership and, not, and a lack of vision is the other, lack of vision. We can't just keep going the way we are on a year to year and expect that this is not going to happen again the next year. We are in an inflationary period that is, doesn't look like it's going to get any better. So what's happening now is going to happen again next year. We need people, you, which we've elected, to serve as our leaders and visionaries to see what, how we're going to be two years from now, three, five years from now, so that the people that live in this amazing county can have their homes, raise their children, and be able to know that they have a board of supervisors that has that leadership and the vision to go from this point forward and be able to thrive, not survive, yes? yes. Right. So I would like to see something really start moving with the school board and see what we can do there. Thank you very much for your time. Gary Baker from Boozy Creek. Uh, I don't know how I can uh, do any better than Sharon Deacon right there, but uh, first off, I want to thank Mr. Daniels for explaining the trash situation, picking up on Sunday. I didn't know there was a bottleneck that they were uh, closed over in Tennessee where we take the trash. So uh, on our next meet, uh, our meeting on uh, May the 14th, town hall meeting, first one for District 2, that anybody from District 2 that's here be on May the 14th at 6 p.m. at the Boosie Creek Community Center. The way I understand it, they're gonna have two more, one in Hilton's and one in Weber City later on in the year. Now, Mark, I, I wanted to bring up uh, the Bray Farm. Uh, we should have uh, been down on our knees begging, the EDA should have been down on their knees begging for those gun manufacturers to come out of the north down there. Amen. And I don't care if we needed money or not. Yeah. We should have uh, done that because something like that would have brought in a heck of a lot more than a Walmart or something like that. They built a four billion dollar building down in Maryville, Tennessee. Anyway, another thing, y'all talking about deducting 
I don't want to see, I don't care if they do wear a gun and a badge, I don't want to see anybody other than the sheriff deputies driving home in our county vehicles backwards and forwards to work and not have to pay a dime. And that's a wear and tire on our vehicles. And there's no sense of that. I don't care who you are. Right. That's right. $140,000 a year. If they can't afford gas, they need to quit their job. And another thing, <laughs> another thing is the farmers in Scott County are the bigger or the big taxpayers. They own the land, and they somewhere around 45% of what uh, the county taxes are paid are by the farmers. And we're going to have to, y'all going, y'all need to do something to help them farmers in Scott County. Uh, and I ain't heard a thing yet on the school board. And I know it was brought up last night. Have they got a long range forecast? For this county, because are the children better educated now than they was back in my day? No. I said they, they can't even write their name, and they sure can't make change. So what is uh, what? Is, you just can't keep a feeding that uh, that all the time. And I may be plumb out of line on that, but that's the way I feel about it. Uh, I've got a bunch of stuff, and the way I understand it, uh, we're paying eighteen thousand dollars a year per student, where the nice, where the state average is ten thousand. I may be wrong on that, but that's what I heard. So something has to be done. I'm sorry I'm here running my mouth again, but uh, uh, please hold off on these uh, taxes till you get a grip on. Micromanage like old Red Wine and Hood did several years ago. When they come in here, if they said we had to cut our budget 10%, buddy, we had to cut it. And that's what we done. Every, every office in Scott County, we had to cut those, uh, those budgets 10%. So there ain't no sense of that. Cut everything you can. Uh, do the best you can. Y'all have got a hard job. I appreciate you. But don't just jump in there and raise taxes. And I didn't like this last night about calling somebody a liar. If I'd have been somewhere across the room right here, they wouldn't have done that to me. Thank you very much. Carter's Valley. I've been up here before on this, but a lot of folks have said what I'm about to, and I back them up. People, you see on the news people crossing the border illegally. That's going on right over where I live, East Carter's Valley. There's more and more Tennessee folks starting to live there keeping their Tennessee tags and they give a Kingsport mailbox address they're getting out of their state income tax which that goes to the whole state uh, little stuff like county stickers and stuff every dollar makes every dollar it, it makes sense but it's getting worse and worse over where I live and a lot of them is going to live in across the state line, which Tennessee people just as good as anybody else. But they're coming over here getting an education at Scott County expense part of it. And I've heard, well, the state gives these grants. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what I was told. Well, who pays them grants back? It ain't Kentucky people. It could be in Norfolk, Alexandria, Scott County. But they need to pull their part. Uh, 
if a Scott County student goes to say Dobbins Bend or something, they got to pay their tuition. So what's the difference? I've been told, well, that creates jobs when we get more students, we get these grants. When you get a new employee, who pays that employee? It's tax money. Everybody needs a job, but we need to police that a little bit better, see what's going on. I'm not for that. I could get Tennessee tax put on my car, but it's not right. God's watching me. I ain't going to do something I ain't supposed to. I bought a 2024 Mustang GT. I say the tax on that will be $400. If you let it. Okay. <laughs> God's blessed me, my family, my income and everything, but everybody needs to be treated fair and equal. I don't care if you're a man, woman, or whatever you are this damn time. <laughs> but I could, I could sit on my front porch, East Carter's Valley, it's more Tennessee vehicles going from my house than what it is Virginia. And it, it's just not right. I don't care to feed the hungry, but at least let them try to help themselves a little bit instead of try to beat the government. That's our tax dollars when you got people going to school. <laughs> they ain't supposed to. I went to Weber City School either yesterday or day before yesterday. Yesterday, I thought. It was so many students cars with Tennessee tags letting those kids out. What's well, a roadblock up down through there? They go to Hilton's, Weber City Elementary, Gate City High School. I don't think they go to that border right over Twin Springs in Tennessee. But it's right here on the state line. But that needs to be checked into. If nobody else does, I am. It's kind of like being pregnant. One day or nine months, you either are or you ain't. You can't be a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so we need we need to kind of open our eyes a little bit. How many? Who voted? Who did not vote for a tax increase? Show of hands. We have not voted. Everybody voted. We have not voted. We have not voted. Oh, not, not been voted yet. No. Okay, I'm sorry. It's a, there's been a lot of confusion around that. I yeah, well. It's not even been proposed. Uh, like I say, I'm doing okay right now. And God bless me. But there's folks in this county choosing their grocery and their medicine. And it's probably more than what we think. God bless them people. But I, I, like I say, these other folks, y'all got a hard job. I wouldn't do it. There's no saying anytime you talk about politics or religion, you got a 50-50 shot and make it somebody mad or glad. <laughs> a lot of truth to that. Okay. Y'all do a good job now. <laughs> Thank you. My name is Chad Culbertson. Uh, I've lived uh, here in Scott County. I'm, I'll be 49 this month, so I've spent almost a half a century in Scott County. Uh, I live up, up right just this side of Snowflake. I uh, lived there my whole life. Uh, my wife and I both have, uh, we've been married for 30 years this year. Uh, we've acquired close to, somewhere around 500 acres, uh, a farm, well, rough land in Scott County that we've been making some into farmland. We work six, seven days a week, have done this for 20 some years now. We've got uh, three small businesses that we use here in Scott County. We've generated quite a bit of money, revenue for the county through uh, houses, rental properties, and, and, and everything else. So uh, uh, I, I just want to give a little bit of background. So I, I do have ties to Scott County. So 
Uh, I work at Eastman. Uh, my wife's a, a nurse over in Kingsport. She's a director actually over there. So, so I can I can afford the taxes if you raise them. Uh, my son, on the other hand, one of these days, I don't know. I don't know if he can. Uh, his, his children. Hopefully, I'll have some grandchildren who get married this August. I don't know that they can hold on to this 500 acres that me and my wife's worked 20 some years, along with my dad, dad who just passed away. Uh, to help me acquire all this. It's been a, a goal for me to get this land, and I want to keep it because I, I love Scott County. I want to leave Scott County, and I sure don't want to have to spend every dime I have. I'm, I, like I said, I work at Eastman. I've been Eastman for 30 years, right at 30 years. Would like to retire soon, uh, in the next few years. Don't know, uh, you know, if, if we raise these taxes and keep raising the taxes, and I want to keep my land to retire and farm, I might have to stay working at Eastman so I can afford to pay the taxes. But, uh, you know, I, and like I said, I, I'm, I'm, the Lord's blessed me and my family. I, I can afford it. But there's lots of people that y'all even heard a few here tonight, but I promise you there's a whole lot more that can afford it. So, um, and I, I, I appreciate all of y'all. I meant to say that when I first come up here. I, I don't know much about local government. Uh, I, I am interested in it. I like, you know, I like hearing it. I've, I've listened to here the last few years of government, and I know there's a lot of waste in our uh, federal government, and I'm confident, and I know there's some waste here. So, I would just like to ask that, you know, I, I'm not sure. Like I said, I don't know exactly how you do it or how you go about it, and I would be willing to offer my services to help any way I can. But uh, I suggest we look at cutting the budget somewhere, somehow first and foremost before we go raising taxes uh, that makes sense to me uh, i work at eastman we deal with this on a regular basis i'm actually a manager at eastman i'm always having to roll out stuff to where we're having to cut cut budgets uh, we don't go gouge the, the customer for more money just because we're over budget we cut cost and we do it on a regular basis sometimes it hurts uh, so like i said I, I know there's waste in this county no doubt i'm not calling nothing out here tonight i don't know one of these days it might you know it might be that you know if enough people here, i don't think a lot of people is even aware of it I, I just heard about just a week or two ago and that's why i'm here tonight i've never been here before to a meeting shame on me uh, that's why i say i respect you all for the work that you do and i appreciate you but i will try to get more involved and kind of keep up with what is going on in the future and like i said i'm more than willing to help any way i can if any of y'all would ask anything I could do to help, I promise you I would give you any any, any assistance I could and figure out some way to cut the budget. I'm going to remember your name because we're always looking for good people on committees. We are. So Ch Chad Coles. Uh, yeah, I've got your name. Okay. Okay. Well, but I, I do appreciate y'all and I, I don't want to, you know, I, I know it's easy to get tempers flared and, you know, and I, I don't know enough about the situation, but I do know I would certainly, I mean, I, I, you know, if you got to raise the budget or the taxes to pay the budget, you got to do it. But I still, I, I don't, I don't know that we've explored the other avenues first and I would suggest doing that. So thank, thank y'all. Appreciate it. My name is Kim Osborne Francis and I have lived in Scott County all my life. I've worked in Scott County all my life. I've had a business in Scott County for over 40 years. I own Southern Graphics right here in Nate City. Probably in that 40 years, Scott County may have spent um, ballpark, maybe $40,000 in my business. I can help Scott County if I get to bid on their work. I don't get those bids. And I've talked to the supervisors, I've talked to you people, and I've asked for that business, I've not got it. That's not what I'm here about today. I want to know if we were able to get the breakdown of the number of county vehicles that we're paying for and the amount of gas we're paying for in those vehicles. I had asked for that last night and was told we would have it today. Ms. Starnes? Uh, yeah. 
This is this is public expression. It's not supposed to be a debate. Or oh, I didn't, it's, didn't it's want to debate it. She had just said yes. She didn't have that, but she would have it today. And I didn't get it in my email. I thought you were bringing it to the meeting. We have 79 vehicles. 79? And, mm -hmm. and we will respond to your FOIA request. Okay, that'd be good. Okay, something else that I wanted to talk about. Um, in my 40 years down here at Southern Graphics, I can tell you that over the years when it came time for elections, I saw a whole lot of people that came in my shop that had really good hearts and good intentions. They wanted to be a part of Scott County government. They wanted to contribute. They wanted to help the families and the businesses here in this county. I've printed your cards, there, several of you. Um, I watched them come in and I listened to them right there at the front counter and they talked about, you know, changes they wanted to see made and things we could do differently that would help the county out and that would help the people out, the elderly people out, the children, and the, the circumstances that we live in here and deal with every day. And they were good people. Some of them won and some of them didn't. A whole lot of them never ran a second time. Some of them did. But until I came in here last night and sit in that corner and watched how you people treated one man that came in here and tried to make a difference and tried to help the people of Scott County and be honest, upfront, and open with a proposal to hopefully lower taxes and keep from taking food out of people's mouths and making their lives harder. I could not believe the treatment and the verbiage that I heard from you people talking to this man. And I honestly can say that all those little people that came across my front desk up there and wanted to try to do this job and they got in here and I called them out because I said, you said you were going to do this. You've not done it. Why? I understand now. I've got a 100% better vision on why it is so hard for Scott County to move forward and get around the old guard than what I ever realized it was. And I have all the respect in the world for the people that will stand up here and try to change this and make this a decent place to live and a place where not taxing people completely out of their property and across that state line. Thank you all. copies of the budget and board packets under the Freedom of Information Act, uh, a copy of the bylaws. The, your agenda is online, but the packet isn't, and it shows where our money is being spent. Online, it says at least one copy of the proposed agenda and all agenda packets and unless exempt, all materials furnished to the members of a public body for a public meeting shall be made available for public inspection. At the same time, such documents are furnished to the members of the public body. The proposed agendas for the meeting of state public bodies where at least one member has been appointed by the governor shall state whether or not public comment will be received at the meeting, and if so, approximate point during that meeting when the public comment will be received. So it's required for you all to give us a packet at the time of the meeting or it's disqualified a meeting. Right? Is that law? If you don't if you don't provide us with a packet tonight, doesn't it disqualify this meeting? No ma'am, if it's if you have requested the packet ahead of time, then it can be supplied to you. But this says that it's supposed to be supplied at the same time as the meeting. If you have made that request ahead of time. That doesn't say that. It says it's supposed to be made at the time of the meeting. It doesn't say ahead of time. I mean, I'm looking at the law online right now. You could pull it up.
you're supposed to provide at least one copy of the packet to somebody in this meeting. <laughs> Online. The package shows the budget and what's your money, what's your money, what our taxes are being scanned Could I go ahead and get a uh, copy of the working budget that we got? I got mine from yesterday. I don't think I'm putting any additional markers in. Depends on if I took notes on with the times if they're going to keep raising everything in the county. <coughs> now, does the funding on the housing, because it comes through Scott County Housing Authority, do y'all fund that? Do y'all know? She's probably got that in that paper. Huh? Yeah, I'm just kidding about that. Because yeah. <laughs> you look in the paper, Kingsport Times is saying one bedrooms nine hundred to twelve hundred dollars. I have a two bedroom house with a lady that's disabled. She's been with me for eight years. The county part is three fifty seven, and I get five hundred for it. Do I kick her out so I can pay my taxes? I'm a widow. You know, I'm working a part time job to make other ends meet. You know, people can't keep on t taking on more and more just to survive. And y'all really need to do a deep soul searching on what y'all's decision tonight. Because, you know, God's watching. <laughs> and there's people in need. <laughs> We're going to tear this, the old jailhouse down. Do you have about off that how much it's cost the county to do that? And the next question is, once they get it torn down and moved out, what are they going to put back in place of it? Put the bugs here. Darryl, you had that number out to what was it? discussing Jeff what we're going to do back back there they need a sally port to get the prisoners from the jail out of Duffield into the courthouse without having to walk through families and, and people that they may have harmed over the years so we're trying to make it say a safer place to bring them if you'll if you'll look we've got a, a trailer uh, out there right now that they're, they're going into it's not a house trailer it's a pool behind a small trailer that they're staying in right now. But that's that's what the plans are. What company is doing that? Tila Green. Well they got it. Tila Green? Anderson. Yeah. And thank you, Jeff, we looked at that. <coughs> we looked at that two years ago and, and got bids to add on. We thought we were the judge was going to make us do another courtroom and the bids were 28 million and 33 million 
to do that. I hope I'm out of here when they finally decide to do that, but right now it's, what, Darrell, 117 something to get it tore down. Well, it's going away. You got that far, they can walk up there. That's all you got to do to solve that problem. Anyone else want to come up to the podium and speak? <coughs> My name is Casey Bellamy. I am from Yuma, originally from Rock Cove. Mr. Bricky, you was my principal. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I grew up here, and I have never seen it the way it is now. It is ridiculous. And the taxes keep going up, but I don't see where it's being spent. I drive around. The roads are not paid. There's potholes everywhere. Where's that money going? Because it's not going towards paving the roads. You call Richmond, there is no dirt roads in Scott County. So how is that possible? Another thing, when it comes to tax breaks, 79 vehicles, does that include first responders? Or is that just the council and members of the council? I'm just curious because when you think about that, not only do you have to think about the gas that's being spent, but the maintenance, on-time maintenance, which I can't even do on my vehicle because oil is so expensive, oil filters, plugs, wires. Is that being spent by our tax money as well to keep your vehicles up to date? Because mine ain't up to date. I'm driving around now over 5,000 miles overdue because I can't afford to buy oil. That should be something. A woman said yesterday, we need to think about our wants and then our needs. Or think about our needs and then our wants. We need certain things. We need a good school system. Our kids are not being taught. Okay? Back in my day, we said the Pledge of Allegiance. We said an early morning prayer. And we have took it out of our school systems. Look at where our generation has gone now. I'm just saying, there's a lot of things that can be done. There are a lot of breaks that could be took away. You want to bring businesses in? Give them a tax break. You need volunteers for your fire department? Give them a tax break. You put so many hours in, we're not going to charge you so much on taxes for your property. You put time into our community, we're going to help you. Have incentives, okay? That's the only way we can come together. Look at the people in the room. Generational. <clears throat> we need to get the younger generations involved in our politics. We need to teach them about what is going on because we are not like other counties. We are different. We are God-based. And we need to come back to that and stop trying to be like everybody else, like Tennessee and all of that. We need to be community-based, have community farms for those who can't afford food. That 75 acres of land in Duffield could be worked and feed people. I'm just saying there is opportunities here. You just gotta open your eyes and see them. Thank you. My name is Ben Christian. I live in Gate City. I'm from the Mammal community. Um, I lived in Mammal. I've lived in Scott County all my life. I'm an insurance exe executive at Price and Randy Insurance in Kingsport. And I jokingly tell people all the time they teach us three things in Scott County: reading, writing, and writing Kingsport. Mm -hmm. And that's normally met with, with with chuckles, and that's what it's intended for. But I don't believe everything that we do should be outsourced to Tennessee, and none, none of the rest of us do either. And, and I, I respect. Every one of you for sitting up here and taking the, the pummeling that you're taking today. It's certainly not an easy thing to do to sit up here and, and listen to your neighbors uh, bring their concerns. And, and uh, everybody that's here, I'm sure, also has come with the best of intentions, I hope. Uh, we just all have a funny way of saying it. Um, I've got several houses in Scott County. I can afford to tax. Uh, I, don't, I don't want to. And I came this evening. I came this evening being aggravated. You know, but now I really am kind of concerned 
because uh, what what I think I see is um, a difficulty to, to envision how we're going to get out of some of the what we're in. You know, uh, I, I I know enough about budgets and having to help run a business that when you got an issue, you have to uh, either cut something real deep or, or hit something real hard to bring something in, and, and you'll deal with problems down the road when they're down the road. But uh, my boys are in school in Scott County, but I, I pay for them to go to the Christian school, and that's that's fine by me. And I we don't get a tax break for doing that. So if I'm helping fund for somebody else's kid to get an education, that's that's okay. Um, but I don't want them to end up getting employed and going to Tennessee or or somewhere else. You know, I do. It's what I do. But also, I, I run our business division. And I don't deploy somebody over here to write a bunch of insurance in Scott County for businesses because. It's not as plentiful. And so we do a lot of our business in, in Tennessee, and I wish that we could make more of an impact in Scott County. What, whatever you do with this tax, I really hope, I hope we can find a way to, to, to not hit it, because I, like I said, I'm from Man, And um, man, there's a whole lot of those houses that have just dried up in, in my lifetime. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm 45 years old, and there's a lot of those houses that, uh, that, that just don't have anybody in them. And the people that might be in them are not investing in them. And I bought a house, and I bought houses in this very room off the tax sale, and I benefited from that. But you know, somebody didn't. And if if houses go down, your tax burden is going to be higher for those that are going to be still here. But the houses that you want to try to get property tax on, people might just off and leave those things, and then Mitzi's going to have more sales, and then folks might come in and might invest in them. They might not, you know. But whatever that you do with this tax deal, we really do need to have a long-term vision for Scott County that can be communicated to folks because I think it might make it easier for people to, to, to take what y'all have to do. It's tough where y'all are sitting. I wouldn't want to be there because you gotta make got to make the wheels turn. Uh, I just wanted to, to respectfully just add my voice to, I hope it doesn't happen, but if it does, let's make sure that, that my boys that are 17 and soon to be 14. I want them to be able to afford these taxes. Chad, man, you did a great job talking, pal. Uh, I, I couldn't agree more with, with what he said. Just because we, we can't afford something don't mean we want to have to, especially if we're not real sure about what the vision would look like. Because I, hey, one of them houses that were all, was all crapped out was my great grandparents, Cecil and Blanche Eastep, and I bought it to fix it, and I'm going to move back into Man. I got no plans to leave Scott County. I just hope I don't regret it. So, y'all, let, let's let's make this thing good for the long term. I know y'all got other things to do. Thank you for listening to me. Thank Appreciate you. it. Anyone else? We will clap. Just told me it's and uh, move on. No, good. I'd say something, Mr. Chairman. Sure. Now, there's a couple items that. Uh, I think we need further discussion on one is the uh the miss branson mentioned russell county landfill is there any discussion on that they asked for a uh, letter of opposition what was the timeline on that do they need it like, next week do they need it how long they left her later says the public hearings tomorrow or there's they, a meeting tomorrow they have a public hearing tomorrow the list is Friday, March 8th, but tomorrow's Wednesday, March 8th. Well, it says 2024. Well, is there any discussion now for the issue? The landfill? We're not sure on the date. Yeah, I mean, I'm not the letter. Like she said, we are down. We are down river from us. Uh, there's a link on the DEQ website uh, that has the uh, uh, notice of intent about that landfill. They on the DEQ website they call it the Carbo landfill. That uh, I can send that link to the entire board if you want to read about all the particulars as far as the DEQ permit goes. Could we, um, could we create like a provisional letter like we do for some of those? And kind of get a consensus. 
in front of them. They don't know the ballot right now. That, that's that's yeah. what I'm saying to give, give us just a, a little bit of time. Bill, if you could get that to us, we could look it over it individually. And or you then, might look at it at the end of this meeting. Yeah. And then let Frida, if, <laughs> if we're not here at 2 a.m. <laughs> the other item is uh, the board packet. Is Do we need to get a ruling on that later? Available to the public prior to meeting? The budget packet. Or the, or the board packet. Our new civic clerk will allow us to push that out to the same thing you get on your tablet pushes to the public they'll just need to go to our website and sign up to receive that and what you gave her was a working copy of the budget right yeah um right. your agenda's online but your budget's not online i don't even look yeah yes but what are about people who don't have access to the internet some of our residents in this city as i said we're seniors citizens we or people who are computer illiterate. Not everybody is tech savvy in this county. I'm sorry to say that. Maybe a bit more money in the school budget to where they can learn that, they would know how to use it. Mike, could I say one thing? Go right ahead. I want to inform the public that all this stuff that goes up, it's, it's not our doing. It's a lot of it's sent down from Richmond, and we have no then that needs to be addressed and we need to be notified that it comes from Richmond. Just let that me, way let me talk. accuse you of doing it. Let me Can talk. I turn the volume up so people back here can hear better. Sorry, man, we've had problems with that in the past. We'll get it fixed for you. Anyway, a lot of this stuff that's sent down, we we do not control. We don't control how much we have to give the school. We give them just exactly what we have to. And in the last several years, the budget for the school has went from four million and something up to nine million and something. We don't control that. They okay. tell us what we give, and just uh, the regional jail it goes up because we're having to keep so many inmates down there. We can't control that. We can't control a lot of this stuff that y'all are blaming us for. But we try to do the best we can do and try to cut everything we can possibly cut. Yeah. Sit down. Okay. I'm talking. Just sit down. You're rude. You're very rude. Thank you. I'm just telling you like it is. I'm not rude. I'm just speaking to try to tell you all people. Just like the courthouse, the judges and stuff tells us we've had to do this, we've had to do that to satisfy them. We didn't want to do it. We don't want to build a 30 or 40 million dollar uh, jail addition, but sooner or later it'll probably come. But we don't want to do it, and we don't to want the taxpayers to do it. But when they tell you you have to do something, you have to do it. Who pushes back on those? How can they rule the county? Yeah. Privatize the jail system. Yes, and then they stay in there, free like a hotel. I, I mean, they so do. The, the, the courthouse is a prime example of waste. I can yeah. name you all kind of waste that goes yeah. on there all the time. They close the, they close the whole courthouse down just because it comes to column for a half inch of snow. They close it down and we still pay the salaries for everybody working there. There's a house over there supposed to be the judge's office sitting down there that he don't even use and they're going to build some else, but the inmates in his office over there in that little house beside the courthouse. There's all kind of ways to save money. We've tried to do that, Chad. Chad, we're talking the, about all that. And the judge but, and the judge won't give it up. Well, then, we, we, we let's, can't let's, make, let's make it. Let's make it. Who does he answer to? Who does the judge Is it, is it, uh, excuse me, is it trust? Because I've heard this, and I won't know if you both know this. Is the jail operated by the judges and the lawyers? Yes, that's why they circle it. It's going to stay. How there. can it be that? How can a judge say, well, I'm going to send you down there to my house. You're going to pay my wages for a while. I ain't mine. That jail's got to stay full. Mm -hmm. Everybody works there. It's based on the full capacity of that jail. And if you the got the driver, stop there, get it, mark it, and all these other places, go in and buy their dinner, turn them a couple of times. They ain't nothing wrong with that. You get. But you're wasting company time. You're wasting our tax dollars money, just like the state. They don't start to work till seven o'clock of the morning. You go to Duffield, get it any morning, eight o'clock, they're all in there buying their breakfast. 
Now, if there's places to buy breakfast before 7 o'clock of the morning, let them buy breakfast on their time. Not on our time. Get out and work. Work our roads. It's so bad. It's just are it's the all waste. Are that are sending inmates to the Stark County Jail or that have inmates in the Stark County Jail waiting for trial or whatever, do they pay us for that inmate? They pay or, is, or, or we getting a tab on all that? Each county pays their part of the jail. And city. It's per inmate. Per inmate. per inmate. You pay per inmate. Okay. Good deal. You've okay. got. But who, who, on the, back to the judge, who, how can we as a, a citizen of Scott County complain about the judges? Who, who do we complain to? If they yeah. rule the county, who, who do we They're not the be all end all authority. We can report them to somebody. Your I'll tell you how that's If you go in the courthouse and look on the door, there's a phone that says no cell phones in courthouse. Well, a judge made that rule. It's a rule made by a judge. Any public building you can take your cell phone in, you can record it. Are oh, you going private records? Back there where land deeds and stuff is? Sorry. You can take your cell phone and go went to it. Had to go to Kyle Kilgore to get it stopped. Judge, we don't live by rules. We are governed by laws. So somebody's got to tell these judges. I don't know if everybody's scared of them or what. But look. They're not the Do your part and leave us alone. Yeah. That's it. They're, they just make what they want. Well, who made that? A judge. Just because he's a judge don't mean he can make a rule and us live by it. We're governed by law. Back to your statement about the school funding. I know that Bristol Casino gives every county that surrounds them tax money that they generate. So that money is supposed to be divided up, up inside of the county. Where does that money go? Where did that money go last year? That's going to help lower your taxes. We took, we got <laughs> around. Listen to me, you, you can listen to me. The money that's coming down from the casino specifically is, is about $650,000 approximately. Yeah, that's approximately that can go to the schools, it can go to uh, health, it can go to public safety, public safety yeah. and transportation. And transportation. Yeah. That, that's the only three things we can send that money to. And we've already, in our budget that we've looked at twice, and we're gonna look at two more times, we've already put part of that in the, uh, in public safety and in the schools, I think. Okay. Well, but that, like they tell us what we can do. Isn't there a judiciary committee that people can complain to about attorneys and judges? Uh, not that I'm aware of. She's an attorney, correct? Sitting next to you, Ms. Kegley? Yes, ma'am. Is there not a judiciary committee that judges fall under? Nope. Can you, can so, you yeah, right. all so every state, judge? every county has a judiciary you committee. Rule, you got and, uh, I don't believe so. Go in the county. Yes, y'all knew there were some big questions about where different taxes come from. Why didn't y'all have the treasurer be here tonight to be able to answer some of these questions? That would just be common sense. Yeah. If you would, please come up here where we can hear you if you're going to speak. Because we can't hear you. If you don't come up here, we can hear you better. Yeah. yeah. And you know, if John Kilgore is not promoting Do you have something else? Scott County, you don't have another why question. Why don't you get somebody else? Okay. We have closed public expression. Well, I think we, Mr. Skeen is finished. Uh, well, did we finish up with the question about the packet? Was that, is that clear on how that happens? The previous, prior to the meeting, oh, you said, yeah, you did say it with the new system. Okay, move on. Okay, we're going to move on to the, a public hearing on the uh, uh, adoption of an ordinance to amend the Scott County Animal and Rabies Control Ordinance. This is... Uh, been out since May the 1st, I think. Have you all had a chance to look over this? Okay. Let's open public hearing on the adoption of an ordinance to amend the Scott County Animal and Rabies Control Ordinance. Is anyone here to speak on that? We'll close the 
public hearing on the rabies control ordinance and I ask for a motion to approve this. Any discussion before we do? We have a motion. I'm gonna make a motion that we approve that. We have a second. What is the ordinance, by the way? It's to allow a prohibition of dogs running at large on like if your dog trespasses on somebody else's property and they don't like that that it can be addressed with this change in the ordinance right right now if you got a stray dog out and it's running cows you unless it actually physically harms it like a cow the animal control can't come out and get it if it's just running now, what now if, this, if an animal is out running? If, if, a, if a dog is out running cows or doing some type of, you know, harm to your property, uh, but hasn't actually physically hurt anyone or hurt any property, then you can call animal control and have them come out and get that dog. What, why this, and I've, I've had a lot of questions around this too, why this is important, if any of y'all are farmers and know if you got a dog out running cattle, a lot of times, they won't bite them, right? They'll just run them. And, you know, they can run them into a pond or, or a gully or anything. And you call animal control, and they're not allowed to come out and, and get them uh, because they haven't technically harmed the animal. And what this does is this allows them to go out and get the animal, uh, get the dog, or, you know, whatever it is. They but, investigate it first yeah, and then. But that's not, they're not hiding anything else under that law, right? Because as a farmer, if somebody, if if a dog gets after our cattle, we have the right to shoot. If it's on our land, we have the right to shoot. So that's not going to be in that bill that you're proposing. Right? No, no, that's not taking away anything that you've already got. It's just making sure that you know maybe you're an older individual and you don't want to go out and deal with the dog. You can't, you can't shoot it or whatnot. You might not have a gun, which I can't so imagine anybody in Scott County not having. Basically, is leash law. No, sir. Not mm -hmm. no, Yes. yes. Sorry. I'm Bill Vegas. I'm director of public works and uh, supervise the animal control. Oh, uh, throughout the year, we get a number of calls from a landowner that says such and such dog is over here. And, you know, we have to ask, has it bit anybody or has it killed anything? If they say no, we're damaged property. We say we can't do anything about it. And it frustrates people that you know, we will say, have you called your neighbor and talked to him about it? Yeah, I've called him and they won't do anything about it. Dog keeps coming and they get frustrated because animal control can't by law go out and get it. What this does is uh, gives us a tool that if you have a dog on your property and you've talked to your neighbor, and we'll, we'll ask you that, if you talk to your neighbor, then we'll talk to the neighbor. And if that dog keeps coming on your property, you don't want it there then we can charge you, okay? It's not a leash law. You don't, if, if your dog is on my property and I don't have a problem with it, we don't have a problem with it. So it just gives us a tool to give landowners an option to get a dog off their property that they don't want, that the neighbor won't work with them on, okay? Well, it's not a leash law. Well, if you're hunting yeah. your dogs, there's an exception there to hunting your dogs. You can find the public notice in the paper, this past paper, because we had to put a public notice telling about this ordinance to have this public yeah. hearing tonight. In the county yeah. paper? In the county paper. Bill, well, since you I have, okay. I've run into this problem last year. I had a neighbor's cows to get my hay field. Well, they tore my hay field off the pieces. I called them up. Okay, I want to let them get back to the meeting, but I will say we have a livestock running large law but that's in roadways we don't have anything but they told me i didn't have no right to protect my property and that's the law you'd have to sell them you'd have to sue them too but anyway sorry we have a motion by miss glover do we have a second well just put this added to you got when you're on the farm you got dogs out there and when they've been filled with state of virginia but the leashes on deer, bear, and these other crawling animals, my dog is going to stray where that that goes because I'm on a farm and I've got the property and she's going to go, but she's going to spend 90% of her time right where I'm at. As long as that your adjacent property owners don't have a problem with that dog, that there won't be an issue. 
Yeah, it's like um, down in Fairview, we we have a couple of community dogs basically that run around. They're good dogs. They just go to from house to house wherever they can get food at for that day.